Good evening. Before I go into my series again with the uh, starting with the world, the world system, remember the three enemies of the uh, Christian, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Next one we'll deal with is the world system, which we're seeing in operation now <laughs> with this election. But um, I got a comment here talking about the King James Bible and, uh, you know, the idea that James White is correct and here's a guy that says here's a guy named Martin Baker. The King James Version translators agreed with James White. They knew their work wasn't perfect. Thank God for the true teachers like James White, unlike false teachers like the King James Only cult. So if you actually go to the video, it's eight, it's eight years ago, and you go to the uh, letters, this is, uh, you get, this is the translators to the reader. And this is the great lie that they keep pushing, that the translators were not intending to make a, a perfect Bible. They were. They said they were building on the work of others. So here's exactly what they uh, they said here. And you can read this on the other a video. Uh, but to make one good one better, or out of many good ones, one principle, and it's about the Bible, one principle good, or translation, one principle good one, not justly to be accepted against, that hath been that hath been our endeavor, that our mark. What was their goal? To make one principle good one. That could not not justly be accepted against. In other words, you can argue with it. I know these guys can read English. That's their problem, it's too stupid. And people get upset when I say that. But the whole I laid that whole thing out and you just see the same lie over and over again. King James translators, they were not King James only. Oh, yes, they were. Oh, yes, they were. What James White would have been is in the category of the self-conceited brethren who aren't satisfied with anything not hammered on their own anvil. That was the crit their critics who said, oh, you should have translated that way and you should have translated that way and the Greek really says this and the Hebrew really says that. That's what James White would have been, not with the King James translators. He would have been with their critics as he is today. Who are never satisfied with anything that, any work that they, you know, except what they think is right. But one principle translation. Can these, these are the people understand what they said? That means one Bible. Not just to be accepted against. It means you don't argue with it. Oh no, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. They got this wrong. They got that wrong. There's a story in there where they, they explain in the translation history where one of the guys says, uh, well, you know, this, this this Greek word could have been translated this way. And one of the translators said, well, we know about that, but we chose another translation, another way to translate it because such and such reasons. They knew all, all what they needed to know. Everyone thinks like somehow they got... Well, if they just knew this, if they just knew that, <laughs> then they know what they're doing. But I want to tell you how, how powerful it was to you know, the cult, you see, the King James only cult. Well, that, that means that for three centuries there was nothing but a King James only cult for all, for, for all Christians. Because that's why Christians view the King James Bible as the Bible. As the Bible. It was only after, in the 1880s, when the scholars got involved and they began telling you, well, this is wrong, that's wrong, and they started speaking to doubt, you know, over, over many, many, many years. And the pastors had to justify going to seminaries and learning Greek and Hebrew. So they started correcting the King James translators and decided to show, their, show off to their, their churches how, how much they knew, as opposed to the King James translators. The Greek word here, look at this, and this is the Aorist participle, uh, you know, and this is the first person, Nicodemus, and this is, you know, and oh, you know, this is, isn't this amazing? Look at that. And you'll never, if, if, you don't need, if you don't know the English, you'd never see that, you see? You see that? If you didn't know the English, you would never see this from the Greek. See, the Greek has something in there. Or you need, if you just didn't know, you know, the, the Hebrew, it just shows you something that the English, you've never seen in there. That's that's the gimmick. See, that's the gimmick. If you just do the Greek, oh, this this is so amazing in the Greek. It's like oh, it's trying to ooh and ah, yeah. 
shock and awe. See, I went to four years of seminary, learning this Greek. Oh, look at this. Doulas. <laughs> Let me show you this. Uh, Terrestai. Oh, look at this. You know. Until they get the, you know, this audience and they say, oh, the Greek really shows you something. But here's a book I want to show you quickly. Why is the Waters? Story of the English Bible and the Revolution Inspired by Brenton Brolick. And he writes here, uh, this is on page uh, 254. But over time, King James, the, the King James Version, by its own merits and intrinsic excellence, won, won its way into the hearts of the folk. In the end, its victory was so complete, wrote one historian, that its text acquired a sanctity properly uh, uh, ascribable only to the unmediated, unmediated voice of God. These guys are reading the King James Bible. They think God is speaking directly through the King James Bible. People. Oh, you don't think they thought of the scripture? Oh, it's not scripture. It's not scripture. <laughs> only the originals of the scripture. No, when they read, for two centuries, three centuries Christians were looking at the King James Bible and holding out that book and said, this is scripture. God's speaking right directly to me. Oh no, you have the Greek. James White, oh no. It's the Greek. Let's see here. Uh, to an un unmediated voice of God. To multi multitudes of English speaking uh, Christians, it has seemed little less than blasphemy to tamper with its words. You get that, people? To multitudes of English speaking Christians, it has seemed little less than blasphemy to tamper with its words. That's the King James cult. For two centuries. It was blasphemy to tamper with its words. And anybody who tampers with its words is lying to you is lying to you. It is blasphemy. In the English speaking world it would become the, become the Vulgate of the Protestant faith in the common language. And this is what uh, George Bernard Shaw must have meant when he wrote, to this day the common British British Shaw or citizen of the United States of North America accepts and worships it as a single book by a single author. The book being the book of books and the author being God. That's inspiration. Oh, the Bible's not is not is not inspired. Uh, it says here a single book by the single author, the book being the book of books and the author being God. And that's what they accepted. George, George Bernard Shaw, an unbeliever, must have meant when he wrote. To this day, the common British, the cult, for two centuries, the entire Christian world was in a cult. And the United States North America accepts and worships it as a single book. Worships it! How many times have we been accused? You worship a book! Oh, you King James cult people! You worship a book! Well, that's what our, that's what our father, forefathers were doing for two, three centuries since that book came out. They worshipped it as the very word of God, a single author. It's it's just a translation. Oh, not according to these, not according to two, three centuries. Who's in the cult? Who's in the cult? The critics. The critics. The anti King James people. I'll read this again. Page two fifty four. To this day, the common Britisher, or citizen of the United States of North America, accepts and worships it, the book. You worship a book. We worship God. <laughs> you lying bums. <laughs> worships a single book by a single author. A single author. It's not chopped up with these bums giving you garbage from the top of their heads. Right? All these modern versions. 
If you go in to another man's book and you change it, that is considered the theft is considered destruction. It's considered wicked. Could you imagine going into the book, works of Shakespeare and correct them? I think it, this would have been better. This would have been better. This would have been better. That's how the King James Bible people believe, believe this in the first two centuries. Believe that King James Bible. They worshipped it as a single book of a single author. That's what King James Bible believes. And it was blasphemy. Blasphemy to change a single word. So when someone gets up there and tells you about James White and all these phonies and these liars and what the King James translators believe and what what our forefathers uh, our Christian forefathers believed for three centuries. You can call them a, a liar to their face. They made that Bible to get one principal translation not to be just as accepted of them. He doesn't cite that in his works. He cites the area where, where translators will consult many translations, which is what is necessary to make a translation. But once the translation is made, there's no translations necessary. The King James translators figures that we're done with translations. Don't need no more translation. We got it. But that's what they always wanted. They wanted that. See, you see that? They want other translation. Yeah, to get a perfect translation. A principal translation ought to be just as accepted from. That for three centuries, Christians believed that it was the work of one man. <laughs> it was the work of God. Not one, one, one man, but one, uh, one person. A single author, I should say. His work of single author. God himself. That's the very thing James White hates. And his whole little cult of anti-King James people. And they call us a cult. You worship a book. Well, so did everybody else before us. So and everyone else. We worship the one who wrote the book. We worship the one who wrote the book and gave us the book. And we take the book as it's written. Not as we want people who think it should be written. So I'll stop here and put this up and I said next video we'll be dealing with the, uh, the world system that Satan has set up as a great veil of deception and evil and to get control of man the blind man, the deceived man uh, in their walk so he won't get his eyes on, on God and not uh, be concerned about eternity and, you know, that's, that's the whole goal of the world system keep you occupied and look at eternity so you don't get saved and it has many many deceptions and, and appeals to the flesh uh, and that's what Satan wants Satan wants you the uh, the people in his his kingdom to be involved in his world system so they don't they'll be complacent in it and stay in it so let me stop here and put that put this up amen thank you